Okay, so the first thing is what is JSON? See, JSON actually stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It was initially introduced in Java, but because of its ease, ease of use and wide, it, it start and being very lightweight, it started having a lot of users and people started moving over to JSON. So before JSON, the data exchange format that was used widely used was XML. So XML is good enough, but unfortunately, it is very expensive to parse as compared to JSON very hard to read again as compared to json it is very difficult so that's why everyone started moving to json so now what is majority of the browsers and rest apis they all communicate via json format right so it is very lightweight as we move forward we'll learn how it is it can be used via exchange format data exchange format in rest apis or in your uh, server server data or we're saving in database and then locally saving your player progress or anything else and then stores it stores the data in key value pairs and unlike attributes that we have in XML, it, it, just, it is simple key value pairs. Anything that you have will be saved against a key value pair. Here the key will be the variable name and the value will, value will be its corresponding value. Now there are very few set of rules that JSON follows that every single thing that you save, every your data will be saved in key value pairs. Right and the key and they will be separated by colon. We will show the example later. And each element is separated by a comma. Let's say there are two variables, variable A and variable B. They will be separated, the value of them will be separated by a comma. And curly braces hold an object. For example, you have a class called player. And if you serialize that, that objects, all of the elements, the member variables of the class player will be under curly braces. Now, if we convert a player into an array, objects of players into an array, then all of them will be under a square bracket so square bracket under that there will be curly braces under that with there will be all elements separated by comma which again where we have key value pairs under separated by a colon and one thing to notice here is irrespective of the data type that you have all the keys are always strings even if it is an integer boolean string float whatever it is the key values is key will be always saved as a string let's show an example so here I have a class called player. Player has three elements, three uh, attributes, name, which is a string, id, which is an integer, and again, uh, is new, which is a bool. As you can see here, this is an object notation. We, we, are, we are saying we have an object of players. Players is again a, nothing but an array or list of player objects. Here each uh, attribute of the player class is saved. As you can see, there is a semicolon being separated here and then each key and value is separated by a colon it's very simple okay let's get started with some code uh, i already have a project empty project created i'm presently using unity 2020.3.11.f1 if you are using any older version you will have to install json.net package there are two options either you go with unity's built-in json utility or the json uh, json package that is available or, uh, freely on the asset store i haven't used json utility much so i can't comment much on that i have been using the other tool which is freely available let me just show you how to do how to do that in case if you don't have it so there are two options available i already have searched over here so if you have two options json object is the one that is available by unity itself and the other one that i, I use is json.it for unity this is very powerful, very widely used and has a really good number of views and I've been using it for more than 5-6 years now. So it's been really stable, really good, easy to use. So we'll be using that. Uh, the version that I'm using is already having Unity version installed so I don't have to explicitly import this package in my project. Okay, so let's get started with writing some code. Let's create some scripts. So first thing is create a folder where we will add our uh, scripts. We'll create one more folder. This will more file. This will be our game manager. Let's say. Okay, there is a spelling mistake. Okay. So I created a game manager class now. Now let's create a player class. And the player class will be the one that we will be loading and saving using JSON. So let's call it player. Open Visual Studio. So the in player class, as I said, this will be used for saving and loading purposes. So we don't need it to be a mono behavior. So 
so let's remove that mono behavior and all other functions this will be just our data class so we don't need any of this okay so our player will have a name so public name and then an id that's all we need in the player class now we go to game manager class so in game manager class we will have the uh, loading and saving part let's say let's create a new function called private void okay let's return a boot over here so if the loading is successful or not okay now the first thing is we check that whether we have the player data available or not ASCII okay let's call it as real data key we are checking it here if it has then we save it to player data okay then we get player press string we have to put the same string over here so now we have loaded the player data that was saved in player press to a string so next now the next step is to parse the data to parse the data what we need is json convert okay this is available under a namespace newtonsoft so if you go here you will see that option here so using newtonsoft.json so we have the namespace and then we say deserialize because we are loading it from the JSON data, so we call it deserialization. So deserialization, we specify the type of class we want it to deserialize it to, and we pass the string object, which is nothing but player data in our case. So once we get that, we save it to player class. Let's create an object of player class here. Okay. So we will assign it to any player. Now, since we loaded it successfully, let, let's return true. Now, in case of error, what we will do is we will create a new class, new player object, player, give, it, give him a name. Players and id so let's say the id is one two three four so now we have a player object created now the next step is to serialize it and save it back to the player press for the next time use so we will again go back player press set sorry, set string the key name let me just copy it ideally we should be saving it in a constant string and then we say um, player okay now we have to convert this to list first so json convert serial as object and then we say so we just pass the object name that's all and then we say player prefs dot save so in this case okay let's just move this below so we are always returning to that's all it is okay now let's go back and say below go back to unity let compile okay create an empty object let's call it our game manager attach the script and we hit load okay now there is no way whether to whether to know check whether it is actually saving or not or loading or not so let's add some logs over there so wherever you are doing so here we say we just log what we loaded This is what we are loading, and here we go. We just will just 
move this above here so we can just dump it over here so we don't have to deserialize serialize it twice so we call this a player data and just again okay let me just say load and then here we will say save okay so as you can see we have we are loading the data because i'm running it for the second time so i already had a looks a player load data available so as you can see there is a player object that has uh, which is under the double quote uh, the curly braces which means it is an object under that we have a player name and play which is whose value is player id and a player id whose number is whose user id uh, player id is 11234 okay so it is as simple as that okay by now we know how to serialize and deserialize the data which is a most basic comment now we have more in JSON, we have more control over how we serialize and deserialize data. For example, if you see the previous example here, by in the logs, the name of this object, whatever it is, exactly is what I have given in the code. Now, what if I want to change my deserialization data structure not to be name and ID? For example, for security reasons, I don't want to reveal my ID directly. Okay, just for an example, so I can I have something called as attributes. So I can write json attributes so again this is available under a different package did i make a mistake okay not sorry json attributes it's json property some property we have to include the namespace so and then I can just leave it as it is if I just leave it as it is it will still deserialize the variable as ID but I want to control that I want to change it okay now I say instead of ID I want it to be let's say for just for argument sake I will just say H H H. now if I go back to code but now when I deserialize it the ID will be empty because it's not it doesn't identify that key anymore but when I save it, if you, as you see here, when I save it, the value is HHH. Even though the value variable name is ID, it is being saved as HHH. So this gives you more freedom in terms of how you want to name your variables inside the code and how you want to serialize. So there are two reasons. One is when you inside the code, you want the name to be more verbose. Someone who's reading your code should be able to understand it. But the same code, if you are using it for, for serializing purpose, the, the size of the data packet will increase so in this particular case the packet is much smaller right but in case imagine this on a web socket or a rest api and you are passing huge data you're passing the data of several objects in one api call then all of that size will increase so you can change that instead of setting hs i can just make it i for id and then i can change it for player name to be n now you see here yeah if you see here now the player name is coming as n and id is coming as i so likewise you have more control of how you want the variable name to be changed as we in the next sections in the next uh, tutorial we will learn about more advanced topic of json proper json properties how we get to access on a, a particular node for example i have a huge data structure i don't want to deserialize the entire thing into one i want to have access only one particular node of it then how to do that we will learn about that in the next tutorial hope you guys like it thank you